And welcome back. Besides having radio frequencies, we also need to have a way of encoding data, meaningful information onto those radio frequencies. So in this video, I'd like to chat with you about a few options and methods that we use to encode and decode data from those radio frequencies. And to help reinforce this, let's go back to the original, a couple decades ago device called a hub. So a physical hub, and let's put some ports on that hub, and those will connect to some network devices. They could be printers, they could be clients, anything that has an Ethernet adapter. So at the end of the day, a hub, back in the day, is nothing more than a multi-port repeater. So any data that device one sends into the network here, the hub is just going to blindly repeat every one of those bits out all the other ports. And the technology that was used was carrier sensing multiple access with collision detection. Effectively, every device before it sent, it listened, it wanted to make sure that the road was clear, it would then go ahead and start talking, and then if it noticed that somebody else was talking at the same time, they'd back off and try again. That's the collision detection part of it. So collisions in general are a bad thing. We don't want collisions. We want to avoid collisions. So let's bring in one access point with one radio. Let's imagine for this discussion we're in the 2.4 gigahertz range and we have a center channel of 6 and we have a 20 megahertz wide channel width. And let's also imagine there's no other access points anywhere in the vicinity so it has no competition from other access points. Now let's go ahead and add some wireless clients. We'll add wireless client A and wireless client B and that'll be enough. And each of those wireless clients have their own little antenna built into their network adapter. Most of the time on a laptop or on a smart device it's embedded and integrated as part of the hardware. And very similar to these six computers that are connected to the hub with their unshielded twisted pair, instead of using wires, we're simply going to use radio frequencies to send and receive between the AP and the clients associated with that access point. And to finish off this picture, oftentimes that access point will be connected to a switch, just like that. And the switch is also very likely in a Fortinet environment connected over directly or indirectly to a FortiGate which I'll draw right here, which is acting as the controller for the switch stack and also for the access points. And this would be our FortiLink interface between the FortiGate and the switch. So let's take a look at what's similar. These devices are in the hub environment. Only one device can send or receive at the same time. And the same thing is true over here with this access point with one antenna with these clients. Client A or client B can communicate, but it can't be both at the same time because we're sharing, just like the sharing the hub over here on the right, we're sharing that range of frequencies with this access point and the other devices who are associated with that access point. However, what's different is the mechanism they're going to use to avoid having a collision. So over here in the wireless space, we're using a technology called carrier sensing multiple access. That part's similar, but instead of collision detection, we're going to use collision avoidance. And here's a quick story that can help us identify the difference with carrier sensing multiple access with collision detection. It's sort of like device one walking up to the edge of a busy street, uh, waiting for it to be clear, or what he thinks is clear, runs out, boom, gets hit. <laughs> Stumbles back to the curb and says, whoa, collision. I got to try that one again. So it has a short timeout, and then it looks again to see if it's clear. When it thinks it's clear, it goes again. And if we have two devices that you know try to send at the same time, there's going to be that collision. So with collision avoidance, here's how it works. Imagine uh, device A that's using a collision avoidance technology. It walks up to the edge of the street, but this time it has its little brother or sister. So it has its little sibling with it. And what it does is says, you know what? You run out first. You're smaller and fast. And if you make it, I know I can follow up and I can make it as well. So if the little sibling runs out the street and gets hit, boom, uh, the sibling is lost. And then the client realizes, oh, it wasn't clear. I can't go. So we're avoiding the actual data packets from being collided with. And that's done with a little technique called request to send and clear to send as signaling methods to indicate that, yep, you've got a little time slot here. Go ahead. There won't be a collision if you go right now. Now, another element I'd like to chat with you about is the actual getting the data on these radio frequencies because the radio frequencies by themselves are just radio frequencies. We need to modulate or modify them to embed the data that we want to send between the access point and the client. And that can be referred to as modulation which effectively is changing or modifying the signal. Another way of stating that would be the signals being sent back and forth are a modulated carrier signal. And there's several options available for doing that. And if we have a client and the access point that are both using the same standard for doing that, that allows them to communicate with each other and encode and decode the data respectively. And as an example of a few options, we have DSSS, which is direct sequence spread spectrum. There's also an option called FH. SS for frequency hopping spread spectrum. There's also an option called B 
PSK, which is binary phase shift king. There's one called QPSK, which is quad phase shift king. There's also QAM, which is quad amplitude modulation. And when I say quad, that's actually a shortcut way of saying this. But because that's a huge big word, I like just saying quad instead. Now, a common theme in networks today is that users and systems, they want their data now. So one of our challenges has been over time is how do we get more and more data encoded and how do we increase the throughput over our wireless networks to our wireless clients? And one of those options is use the concept of MIMO, which is an acronym for multiple in, multiple out. And here's the idea. Instead of the access point using a single radio, why don't we give the access point two radios that it can work with? And for a client, instead of having only one radio, why don't we give it two radios? So if we can increase the streams that are being sent from one to two, for example, for transmitting, as well increasing the paths for receiving data, we're going to end up with the ability to have more throughput than if we were using a single radio on each device. There's also the concept of multiple user MIMO, which is MU MIMO. Again, that's multiple user, multiple in, multiple out. And a common way of representing MIMO and MU MIMO or multiple user MIMO is something like this, like two by two, where the first two represents we have two antennas and the second two represents we can simultaneously connect to two MIMO streams or three by three would be even more with three antennas and simultaneously support three MIMO streams or four by four, meaning we have four antennas and can support four simultaneous MIMO streams. So to take advantage of features like multiple user MIMO, we need to have the hardware in place that supports it, and we need to be using the technologies in the 802.11 family that support it. Another item I'd like to bring up is this one right here, orthogonal frequency division multiple access. And that's a fairly new addition to the Wi-Fi family, and it's with the latest standards for Wi-Fi. And with orthogonal frequency division multiple access, it gives the access point the opportunity to take a channel and break it up into smaller subchunks. And then it can use those more efficiently than just using the entire frequency range as is. So by giving the wireless network the opportunity to subdivide a channel into smaller sections, it can more effectively use the bandwidth and the frequencies that it has associated with it. Again, that's orthogonal frequency division multiple access. And with previous standards, we had the feature of OFDM, but it stood for Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiplexing, where OFDMA stands for Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiple Access. Think of it as enhancement to get more throughput and better use of the frequencies we have available on our Wi-Fi networks. And based on the technology that we're using, the signal strengths that we have, the noise involved, our goal is to make sure we can get the data sent back and forth as efficiently and effectively as possible. And so there's also a concept called link rate. And what we're after is effective link rate that allows data from the access point to the client and data from the client to the access point that can be reliable and fast enough to support the applications such as voice over IP or whatever they're using that wireless network for. And in the next video, I'd love you to join me as we take a closer look at some of the IEEE standards regarding Wi-Fi. So I'll see you there in just a moment. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing.